Now, as we can see from this swing here, steep shaft, little bit over the top, the striking of this shot would be terrible. But then this swing right here, shallow, on path. Well, I can tell you the striking was really, really good on this, but it was one difference in those two videos, how that trail elbow was moving in transition. So I'm gonna get you swinging exactly like the second one here. So just one simple thing to do with that trail elbow, and we're gonna be shallow in the golf club, good ball striking, good curvature, all the things we need to play good golf. So I'm from Channel J Channel Golf, let's dive right into it. So let's take another look at that first slow motion we saw there, because this is one of the most common faults I see with my students. And that is, as soon as I start in the downswing, having the trail elbow just starting to point behind the body. So that'd be the trail shoulder will be going into internal rotation. Just generally, that just means elbow pointing more behind you. Steep shaft, they'll immediately steepen the shaft in the downswing. Now, if you're a little bit out of sequence with your rotation as well, so maybe a little bit quick with that upper body and arms, you can very easily swing over the top also. So, steepen the shaft over the top. So that's gonna be really horrible ball striking. So if you continue to have that steep shaft and real over the top move there, you're gonna either hit massive slices, huge divots, horrible striking, or you might be a golfer out there who might try to reorganize it by early extending to begin in the club pitching back behind you. So we know all of those aren't the resulting good shots. So what do we wanna do? We wanna do the exact opposite. And this is what we see all the best players in the world do. We'll see them start to get that elbow going back in front of them again. So rotating the shoulder externally. So that nice movement of the elbow going in. So a lot of you will be familiar with this other from my videos. Well, definitely most golf YouTubers out there have made this for sure. But it is such an important thing because we can see how the shaft will shallow. We can see then how the club path will be really easily maintained. You'll be hard pressed to swing over the top from here. And we know that shallow in the golf club means you're going to have an easy time turning and rotating through the golf ball. Incredibly important to get this trail arm under control. That was the only difference between the first and the second slow-mo. Right elbow on the first, moving behind on the second, moving in front. The body follows accordingly to that. So rather than talking more about it from that aspect, let's talk about how to get it into your golf swing. This is gonna be a good little kind of training routine to some extent. So drill without the golf ball, drill with the golf ball. If you can follow this for a good amount of time, you're gonna be getting this trail elbow under control. Okay, first thing we need to do to be able to get this into our golf swing is a dry drill. So that's a drill without a golf ball. Most important thing by far to get anything into your golf swing is swings or drills without a golf ball. Because that's the only way we can get them perfectly is when our subconscious isn't reacting to hitting a golf ball and hitting a ball to target. So really, really important. What we do, nunchuck drill. So we grab the club head with our right hand. So for me, right-handed golfer, be my trail hand. And we can see then I'm running it up the right-hand side of my right forearm and I'm gripping it with my left hand on the golf grip. So now what we do, we turn up the top of our backswing, good full body rotation. And then what we do, as we start to turn down the downswing, we pull this grip here with our left hand in front of us. So we're pulling it in front as we're turning. You're gonna feel a huge stretch in your shoulder as you do this. So great for you who have poor shoulder mobility, it'll make you more flexible in your shoulders but you're gonna get that feeling really of that elbow going right in front of me. So it's impossible for me doing this to get the elbow pointing behind. So it's training the ideal move way more so than we'll ever be able to do with a golf ball. We're exaggerating it, extreming it. So important to get something into your golf swing is to exaggerate. So a bunch of these, really pulling it in front, giving you that exact motion. As many as you possibly can, you can do a bunch of those and then do some exaggerated feels, getting that elbow in front without it there. So important to do dry drills. Right, so drill with the golf ball. We're using a training aid here. Now, this training aid is actually optional. You can use any small size ball, but this is my favorite. This is the Tour Striker Smart Ball. So the one that goes around your neck. And then what we do here, we place it in the middle of our forearms. Now, this is a great feedback drill. If we're doing any drill with a golf ball, we want to, if we can, do it where it has feedback to it as well. So what we're meaning by the feedback with this drill, let me get up to the top of my backswing. 
Let's do the bad move. Let's get this elbow pointing behind us. It's gonna drop straight away. Even if I create the tiniest gap with dropping or making sure this elbow points behind me with the bad move, see I moved it that much and it still dropped. Brilliant, brilliant drill. So, like you see there, that's a good little visual for this. The more the elbow moves behind, the bigger the gap between the two arms is created. So, really, really good one just for visual aspect. So what do we want to do? Of course, we want to keep it in between our arms. So I could do one here. I'm just keeping it in between my arms all the way through to my finish. I don't want to let it go once. So we can see there from slow-mo, that right arm's keeping more in. I would start off doing half swings for this for sure, build it up to fuller swings. And it's a brilliant way to work on it there, guys. But if you're doing this and continually you're dropping it every single time, what you can do is an extra little fill, try and squeeze it in transition. Really try to squeeze it into your left arm with your right. Really get that elbow squeezing in. So you're trying to squeeze the living daylights out of it. So let's do that again. Really squeeze that ball into the left arm with the right. And you're really gonna get this feeling big time. So really, really awesome one to work on because it helps of course, like we know the right arm going in. It's a great one for rotation in general. I'm using this a lot with my own game at the moment to get my arms and my body sequenced up better. My arms sometimes get a little bit trapped behind my pivot from not rotating my chest hard enough. This keeps it all timed up nicely. Really, really good one. Lots of reps again. So let's do one more. And we have one more thing we've got to say here, which is incredibly important. Now this last bit, that's incredibly important. This is one of the biggest pet peeves of mine with golfers in general, because you could be practicing, whether it's this or anything else in the golf swing, could be practicing the perfect thing for you, but you still might not improve. And why that is, it's because you're not doing anywhere near enough in the amount of balls you're hitting with the drill. So let's say you have a hundred balls and you're working on this. What I'd want you to do, and this might seem a bit extreme, will be in between every shot, do three to five of these. And then when you're hitting balls, every single ball in the bucket with every club you're gonna hit with that, if this is your problem. So yeah, no balls without it. So I say a lot in my videos, eight balls with, two without. You can do that, but I know a lot of you will start to slack in that. You're gonna to start to hit more balls without and more and more to where you're doing 50-50. Every single ball with it. So remember, we're retraining how the body moves. The subconscious is very stubborn to change a movement pattern. That's why you'll be practicing something, let's say for a couple of weeks and you go to a normal swing and you're at the golf course, maybe give it a little film and you're doing it again. You're going, oh God, how can I do this at the range fine? But when I'm at the golf course, I'm not. Because you haven't done enough of it yet. You haven't done enough of it. You have to really get it to where you can shut your eyes and do it on the driving range and then you might just be able to do it on the golf course. But to speed this up, every single shot, you have to do it because your subconscious will grab onto those swings without it. It will be doing its slight fault. You'll be doing this a little bit with your swings without that ball in between the arms, even if it's slightly, but your subconscious, it's more used to doing that. It's gonna then ingrain that pattern even more than what you've just done. Really, just feel like you're overdoing it. That's what you gotta do, feel like you're overdoing it. If you feel like you're overdoing it, then do a little bit more. So, do tons, you've got this good little routine. Make sure you're doing the dry drill, make sure you're doing that. If you hit every single ball in the driving range doing that and making sure this is happening every time. Remember, guys, I'm not a channel on YouTube that says do this one thing and you're gonna do it every single time. No, you need to do a lot of practice. So, a lot and lot of practice. So, get this done, you'll get it into your golf swing. So, if you enjoyed this video, of course, click that like button if you want more golf instruction just like this. Hit the subscribe button and hit the bell button too to be notified every time I put out a video. So, let's get that right arm moving properly and we'll play better golf.